Amen. If you go to sleep, I'm going to nod. Till I die. Oh, till I die. I'm going to serve God in the house. Until I number one the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying arise and go down to the potter's house and there I will cause thee to, to hear my words then I went down to the potter's house and behold he wrought a work on the wheels and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter so he made it again another vessel, and it seemed good to be potter to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? Saith the Lord, Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, 
O house of Israel. Amen. And the church said amen. amen. I want to talk for a few moments tonight and encourage the man of God especially and also the people of God from this subject, a message from the potter's house. A message from the potter's house. If we study our Bibles at all, we will be acquainted with 2 Corinthians chapter 5 around verse 17 when the Apostle Paul writes from experience and says to us that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Paul, being an itinerant kind of preacher, was able to write from his Damascus Road experience. Well, One of the reasons we all are here tonight at Shining Star House is because we all need a message. Y'all yeah. going to pray with me. Sad though it is, uh, may be that is in these times of deceit, that every word we hear from the potter's house is not always from the potter. Do I have a witness? It is uh, comparable to uh, a spirit of a ventriloquist. The voice seems to be coming from one place, but it's really coming from another. I heard Paul say that if they preach any other gospel, have nothing to do with them. Amen. Isn't that what he said? Right. Don't always listen to everybody talking about name it, claim it, blab it, grab it. Do I have an amen? amen? God uses many images in scripture to show his relationship to his people. He uses the image of the shepherd and the sheep. Uh, he talks about the husband and the wife. Talks about a father and his children. You know the story of the prodigal son. Well, As our shepherd and we his sheep, he protects us. Somebody say amen right there. Amen. He provides for us. Amen. He is our Jehovah Jireh. Amen. The Lord guides us. Amen. In the imagery of the husband and wife, he loves us without condition. Amen. And Jesus loves his church. Perhaps one of the greatest portraits of God's love in the entire Bible is that which Jeremiah points, paints a picture and says that, that the potter and the clay is God and his people. Come just for a few moments tonight. Let us go to the potter's house and see his intention. The potter in our text has a singular purpose in mind. He plans to take some clay and produce something that is profitable for a vessel. Well, a microcosm of every life that has been redeemed by the Lord. Amen. Do I have an amen here? Yeah. Ordinary, useless, worthless clay. And then he turns into a vessel of honor by using his hands. Anybody here in his hand? If you remember Jeremiah 20, 11, he says, I know the plans that I have for you. Amen. I, I plan to prosper you and to give you a future that has some hope. Yeah. Talk to me, somebody. That's God's plan and intent for everybody here tonight that will be willing to come after him. And I have to admit tonight that there are some folk who follow God. They just follow him afar off. Talk to me now. Amen. They're not really getting involved in the church. They are just here to speculate, speculate more than to participate. A lot of folk don't realize it, but there's a lot that go on in the church behind the scene that allow us to come and enjoy the goodness and the glory of the Lord. Can I get an amen somewhere? Amen. After many of us have gone home, there are folk that stay behind to clean up the mess that you let your children make while you were shouting. 
Somebody gonna talk to me before I sit down here. Everybody, amen, that, that, that's in church ain't in the kingdom. Do I have an amen here? Amen, because there's a difference between us working in the church and working in the kingdom. Am I right about it? Everybody standing on the usher's door ain't going to be ushering in heaven. Yeah. Help me somebody. Everybody, amen, doing what you're doing in here don't necessarily mean you're going to be doing it in the kingdom. Talk to me now. That, that, that's why so many folk in the church have an issue with authority. I know we don't like that word in the church. Amen, but this is a free will Baptist church, isn't it? So, so, so the Lord ought to be able to have some free will in his own house. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. Amen. But thank God there's always somebody yeah. that God has in his house that's willing to obey the authority that he has put over them. Right. It may not be a lot, but it don't take God a lot to get done what he needs to get done. Can I get an amen? I found out a long time ago, if God don't get full operation, I'm not going to get it either. <laughs> Every sinner is saved by the grace of God through his son Jesus Christ and there begins to change that vile sinner into a vessel that will be profitable for the kingdom of God. The challenge is the clay does not always cooperate. Help me right there. The clay is not only is not always malleable. It's not always workable. And the potter has to send it through a process in order to use it. Even with his intention, he has to work with the ingredients in the clay. Y'all stay with me now. Amen. The, the, the response here is it takes a long time to make a strong Christian. Just because you shout don't make you strong. Just because you've been here 34 years don't make you strong. Y'all ain't talking back to me. It takes a long time for God to make a preacher that's going to be a real preacher. A deacon that's going to deep like he's opposed to. A believer that's going to believe all the word of God. I believe the problem oftentimes, Bishop, is that we take people off the potter's wheel too soon. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Amen, amen, amen. When you plug an unholy person into a holy socket, you blow a sanctified fuse, and that's going to be a blackout somewhere in the church. Y'all stay with me. I'm going to get there in a minute. It's going to cause some sanctified trouble somewhere in the house of God. And you end up with trouble all over the church. Am I right? You, you can't put a novice in a spiritual place of authority and expect them to produce. They have not suffered anything. People who have not suffered don't appreciate all that God has done. Talk to me somebody. I, 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 I said to the church yesterday... Amen. That you cannot appreciate the majesty of grace until you understand the yeah. magnitude of your sin. Yeah. People that's been through something know how to shut their mouth when they need to. And they know how to speak up when they ought to. Talk with me, somebody. I don't know why folk got a problem with me and they go to other people. The Bible says you got art with your brother. Didn't say nothing about going to your neighbor. Go to your person that you got the art with. Amen, somebody. Because how can two walk together except they agree? Can I get one amen before I sit down? God working with God, we go through some stuff. God allows us to have a tough skin that we may be able to be endure some things. Can I get a witness? Spiritual authority is not by academic excellence or by cunningness or ability, but by spending time on the potter's wheel. Amen. 
Let's take a look tonight as I move toward my seat at the ingredients the potter has to work with in the clay. Mm -hmm. Well, we have to look at what does he have to work with. Now, this is a question. If you say amen, you're going to amen your own self. When God looks at you, what has he got to work with? 